Welcome to St. Paul, Minnesota, where the world's best street snowboarders have descended on the Capitol Building for a competition that features one-of-a-kind obstacles and lines. These features will not only test the riders' technical skills, but also showcase their personal style. It's the ultimate in street snowboard competition. This is Red Bull Heavy Metal. How's it going, everybody? Todd Richards here with Chris Grenier. Now, Chris, historically, local government officials and snowboarding, not the warmest welcome, but today, they've got the red carpet rolled out for them. Absolutely, it's a beautiful thing, Todd. And we're here in a city, snowboarding. Oftentimes, snowboarding's found in the mountains, at the ski resort. But this comes from skateboarding. It's about sliding down rails. It's about features you'd find at a skate park or in the streets. And that's what we're doing. It's gonna be a beautiful beatdown of some steel here in St. Paul. We have trucked in the snow and built three competition zones. Zone one is a gap on the Capitol building's western side where an electric winch will tow riders into a 40-foot gap. Then we move over to the front steps of the Capitol for zone two, which is a pair of downrail features. And zone three keeps the action on the main stairs, but focuses on the Megalodon, the single kinked rail. We're doing jam sessions today with the men and women starting at the same time for a 45 minute qualifying period. The riders will drop in as quickly as our cameras and judges can keep up. After that, the judges will pick the riders who move on to the finals of each zone. And after those 15 minute final sessions end, we'll name a men's and women's winner and runner up for each zone, all leading to the overall men's and women's champions. Today we have the top street snowboarders coming from all across North America and Europe. You'll see a mix of veterans and up and coming riders. We have Olympic gold medalists and local heroes. We got big names like Seb Toots, Benny Milam, Zeb Powell, and Grace Warner. It's a group that will deliver the most progressive rail riding in the world. Therefore, I, Melvin Carter, Mayor of the City of St. Paul, do hereby proclaim today, Saturday, February 10th, 2024, to be Red Bull Heavy Metal Day in the city of St. Paul. Let's do it. Normally, if you try to like go skateboard or snowboard at the state capitol, at least skateboarding, they'll take your skateboard away. It's like the rebel in us that wants to get out and ride stuff that wasn't built for us, but it looks perfect for us to ride on. permission to do something illegal. <laughs> you can cut that out. The heavy metal for me feels like street snowboarding's main stage. So it's basically just street skateboarding, but with snow and on your snowboard. You take any feature that you see in your normal park, whether it's jumps, rails, boxes, and you um, try to find it in the streets of like any urban city or town. Red Bull Heavy Metal is quite a gnarly event. It brings, I mean, they brought out the best street snowboarders in the world to come ride this. You will see a lot of carnage, and that's, you know, people going out there and risking their lives. Yeah, there's definitely carnage, and it's kind of gnarly when you, like, watch your friends fall, and then you're like, all right, I'm going to go try it now. We're all sort of uh, adrenaline junkies at heart, you know? It's uh, scary, fun. You get all the emotions in it, you know, exciting, frustrating. I think that's why, uh, what makes it epic. I like to push that bar a little bit. It's, it's always nice to scare yourself and overcome fear. But to overcome that fear and push through till you ride away and get it the way you like it. It's like this euphoric feeling that you can't really explain. Being able to trust yourself and be like, yeah, I was pooping my pants at the top and now we're here at the bottom and I just had the most fun. And by the end of it, it didn't scare me at all. Getting to feel that arc of progression just within yourself within a couple hours, I think you really surprise yourself and it feels really good. <laughs> Run one, let's go. All right, the riders are getting slingshotted into the qualifier for zone one. Remember, there are three zones you have to make it through in order to go home with the overall crown here at Red Bull Heavy Metal. But first, you gotta make it into the final if you really want those points to count. Now, Chris, talk for a second here about how special Red Bull Heavy Metal is and a setup like this and how unique it is for these riders to be competing in a format like this. Yeah, well said, Todd. Well, one thing to notice is that these riders are getting pulled in on a winch. So that's a trick in itself just to make it to the jump. 
and then you gotta fly over this gap where there's metal and all kinds of things you can get mangled on if you don't make it. And then you gotta survive, and then you gotta land on some rock hard snow. So it's it's uh, definitely a special event, and these are the best in the world just trying to make it through qualifiers here, Todd. No idea. No idea what's going on. And it's cool too because I think it's such like a gladiator pit here. They're, the audience is really a part of this. Get, you know, they're right up close with the athletes. There's snow being sprayed in people's faces. It's a very visceral experience, and it's exciting. I mean, people are flying through the air upside down right in front of you, and it's something special to behold. It's definitely a head on a swivel situation, Todd. There's people flying all over the place. The filmers even have to keep their head on a swivel. As you can see, the cameraman almost took one to the jugular right there, Todd. That is sketchy. Now you said there's the winch right there, Egan Wint, going across here, trying to qualify in. You want to make it into that final round because this is the cumulative point event where you want to take your victories from each of the events and move on to the final. Yeah, absolutely. They got to whittle it down, pick the best of the best, so you're going to want to stay on your feet to make it into this final with an athlete roster this stacked. Let's see how it lines up. The judges have advanced four women and eight men to the Zone 1 final. The men's side, Benny Milam, Sebastian Toutant, and Luke Winkleman. On the women's side, defending heavy metal champion Egan Winch, along with Veda Holland, Jalen Hansen, and Iris Pham. A panel of three veteran judges are scoring our athletes on four aspects of street snowboarding. Style, trick difficulty, the execution of those tricks, and the overall impression of how all those ingredients come together. Okay, finals are underway. We're gonna kick things off with Benny Milam, a Midwest ripper. Start things off with a Backside 720 over this 40 foot gap. Couldn't quite find the landing gear there, Todd. Okay, next up we got Austin Viz launching a backside 720 nose grab over this massive gap, the pride and joy of Spokane. Does it feel good to make it into finals? You got four runs. Do you have the tricks in mind? I sure hope so. You know, I'm hitting a street jump. Can't believe I made it. Stoked to be here. You know, go to back sev. Hopefully we can put it down for the rest of the event, Stan. I have faith in you, dude. Thank you. Looking good out there. <laughs> all right, up next, coming out of North Carolina, we got Luke Winkleman. He can do it all, folks. Slope style rails, jumps. Starting it off with the front side 540 stale fish on this gigantic gap. And then right into Pete Crosdale coming in. Quick 180 into a 540 right there for Pete. So a lot going on before the takeoff of the jump, and he's with Stan. I'm joined by uh, Pete Crosdale, kind of a Midwest legend. I'm, I'm just curious, do you okay. feel like you're getting any uh, home court advantage here today? Honestly, yes. This jump is pretty much exactly like Highland is, just icy and sketchy. It's my, it's my daily life. Okay, so you're primed, you're ready. Uh, you got the next three planned out? No. Good, smart, cool. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Up next, we have an absolute weapon, Veda Holland launching over this gap with a beautiful indie poke. Love to see it. That was insane. And next, we're going into Egan Wint, and she's got some hopes and dreams for this gap jump. I'm like embarrassed to say it because I, it's like kind of a faux pas in rail jams. Um, I kind of want to go upside down. <laughs> I'd love to do a backflip. All right, so Chris, usually if you're upside down at a rail jam, something has gone drastically wrong, but throwing a beautiful front side 360 over the gap. Love that toe pop launching into the stratosphere. That's just good fundamentals there from Egan Wint. We love to see it. Now she loves it, the crowd loves it. Up next, we got Sebastian Touton coming from Quebec, Olympic gold medalist stomping that front side 540 indie grab. All right, straight into Benny once again. He's setting this up here, coming off of his toes, backside, snaps into a back seven, nose grab, perfect landing on that one. Check it. Gets that nose grab, releases, and then it's all about setting a heel edge to not fly into the audience. Okay, here we got Irie Jefferson putting up a backside seven, couldn't quite find the landing, still manages to jam a 180 off that barrel. All right, Jalen Hansen is in now. Let's go of the rope and goes with a nice stalefish over the gap and throws the brakes on. 
Well, Jalen is a bit of a hometown hero. She's from the Midwest as well. Now up next, here comes Luke Winkleman for his second run from the finals. He's coming in, switch, switch, front side, 720, getting upside down, launching off the barrel. This is electric. Joined by Luke Winkleman, uh, street okay. snowboarder, contest Hold snowboarder. This is kind of a combination of the both. Um, what's the strategy in, a, in an event oh. like this? You know, just Coming another up, World Blake. Cup big air, brother. <laughs> no, I'm just cruising, doing the tricks I know I can land and trying to vibe. Good, thank you. Yeah. Austin Viz getting the snap into the gap. Goes off of his toes. Todio flip, 540, landing perfect. That was clutch right there, Todd. Here comes Iris Pham, up and coming rider. Absolute destroyer, goes big old method. That's a fan favorite from Iris. Egan Wint getting the snap into this gap and goes straight up and over. There's the backflip, she wanted it. Just barely got away from her. She talked about it, then she let the backflip bark. Here comes Denver, or he's riding switch stance, which is backwards from his normal stance, going switch backside wow, 540 over that 40-foot so gap. Wow. Irie Jefferson, here he comes. This is the first time he's ever used a winch today, and that is one of the hazards. Chris, talk to talk about that and how you know just using the winch is can be scary on its own. Well, that was a game time decision. He had to put on the brakes, or he would have fallen in that gap and gotten mangled. Now here comes Benny Milam, switched with a switch underflip seven, couldn't quite find the landing gear, takes a face full of metal into that railing there, Todd. Not only that, but the audience can get a snowboard right in the face. You don't really experience that at many snowboard events. Veda Holland now getting ready for her whip into this jump. Remember, it's 20 feet down, 40 feet across to make it to the sweet spot, and she throws a beautiful front side 360. Yeah, timeless style on that front side 360. She stomped it. You can see the impact. Austin Viz has been on a tear all day long. Can he find the landing gear? Shot out of a cannon with that sloth roll. A bit of a bounce situation. See if he can clean that up on his next run. We call that trick a sloth roll. P. Crosdale, he's getting his whip in here, sets his edge, coming off of his heels, front side 720 tail grab. Perfect, he's been on a tear on this jump. This is a huge event for Pete Crosdale, up and coming rider, looking for some shine. Now here comes a veteran in the game, Benny Milam coming in switch, launching backwards into that switch under flip 540, tuck knee, tweaking it. His back's probably gonna feel that tomorrow. Austin Viz, once again, this is coming rapid fire at this point, goes into another one of those sloth rows, an inverted backside 360 this time. Okay, that's a new generation trick we call the sloth roll, Todd. Uh, you're pretty old. People probably didn't do that back when you were snowboarding. No, I for sure did that, but usually it's because I hooked my toe off of the jump. Egan went into the next attempt here. Will she stomp the back lift this time? And she gets it perfectly. We love to see it. The crowd is fired up. People are going bonkers. Egan's fired up. She showed up today and she put on a show there, Todd. Up next, we got Sebastian Tuton. Here he comes, switch, backside 540. Let's throw down to Stan, who's with Egan Wint. All right, Egan, you're kind of a, you know, a renaissance rider when it comes to these contests. Uh, does something happen within you when you get out here, you just turn into an animal? Yeah, I like black out during these things. Holy cow! I black out, I like get totally manic and crazy and come to at the end and at the award ceremony and see what I did. <laughs> well, I think we're gonna be seeing you win some money after this event. That was looking great. <laughs> well, she wanted it and she got it. After the first of our three zones, defending champion Egan Wint is on top of the leaderboard. Jalen Hansen and Vita Holland are closely grouped behind her, followed by Iris Pham. On the men's side, it's even more closely grouped together with a pack that includes 2022 Red Bull heavy metal champion Benny Milam and U.S. national team snowboarder Luke Winkleman chasing Austin Viz. I mean, what are we feeling? Are we gonna be rubbing this in Pat Fava's face later? What's going through your head? Definitely rubbing it in Pat's face. Can't even believe it on the jump. Yeah. Freaking crazy. Haven't even hit a jump all year. <laughs> Feels great, man. So stoked. Yeah, street cred is through the roof. We're at the Capitol building. Uh, less pressure, more pressure going into the zones that you feel a little more comfortable in, I'd say, the steel. 
Yeah, I'm excited. I think pressure is kind of off. I'm just like so stoked to be here. It's going to be a good evening for sure. The results for zone one, the gap jump are in and for the women. Veda rode great all zone one with that front three. Jalen Hansen with the backside 360 landing her in second. And of course our winner, Egan went launching a backflip into the stratosphere. And the men went technical over the gap. That's Benny Milam with that cab under flip tuck knee. Pete Crosdale, local hero, landed in second place with that front side seven. And our winner of zone one, Austin Viz, with a beautiful backside 720. We move over to the capital steps for zone two. That's next as Red Bull Heavy Metal continues from St. Paul, Minnesota. Welcome back to Red Bull Heavy Metal and the start of our first rail section. Joining the competition after sitting things out in zone one is Grace Warner, a stylish and fearless snowboarder who can threaten for a podium position. I like to push that bar a little bit. It's, it's always nice to scare yourself and overcome fear. I feel better now. I'm a bit of a thrill seeker, and I like to battle something until it's completed. I look at it more so as an art form, and the spot aesthetic and the way something's filmed means a lot to me. I think snowboarding, for me, has always been a way of self-expression. Um, it's kind of like the only way I've really felt like myself. Like, I truly feel like me when I'm on a snowboard. That's why I feel that I've fallen so deeply in love is because I have like this special connection to it, which might sound weird. Like I might be obsessed, but <laughs> I'm obsessed with snowboarding. It's so <laughs> insane. All right, Chris, so zone one done and dusted. A third of this competition is over. We move over here into the handrail portion. We have two rails on either side of the set of stairs. Oh! It is not soft, it is not cuddly at all, and these riders are thrown down. Now let me tell you something, Todd. I was walking around the course earlier today. The snow is firm, there's concrete everywhere. This is high consequence. And believe it or not, these snowboarders are sliding down these handrails, Todd. I know you use them for walking because you're so old. That is, that is very true, Chris. Both up and down the stairs, when you get to be my age, they come in very useful. Now, Chris, we talk about rail riding and how accessible it is to people that don't have huge mountains. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, the beauty of rail riding is all you need is a couple inches of snow and a rail and you can do it anywhere. Especially here in Minnesota, a lot of the best rail riders in the world are from this area and you can tell that the crowd is alive and well. Look at how many people came out to support snowboarding. It's alive and well and we just love to see it. Yep, St. Paul has definitely showed up a packed crowd to watch the likes of Joey Fava, Grace Warner coming out and throwing down. Now this is the qualifier to make it into the final of zone two. A cumulative process of stacking points to get you to go home as a winner. You want to make the tricks look good, you want to make them look effortless. That's what it's all about. To take a seat on the lip, wave high. Crowd favorite Gabby Maiden, well, she is not moving on, but all the other zone one finalists are back for the zone two final. Plus, we're adding in Grace Warner. Half of the men are making it to their first zone final. Garrett McKenzie, Mace Ostjik, and Ryan Paul are all in there. All right, zone two finals underway right now as the drone gives us a great view. It's those two rails on either side. One has a gap in, the other is just a straight down bar, and there's a little bit of a bonus feature on the stairs. Luke Winkleman will start us off. Now Luke, he's coming in backwards, which is his switch stance with a switch front side 270. You'll also notice, Todd, that these riders are always fighting to get speed. So you see Austin Viz getting slingshotted into this gap rail where he does a hard way front side 270. Now the judges out here are looking for technicality spinning onto the rail. They're taking consideration of what angle you approach the rail, will you complete the entire slide, and very, very technical aspect is your style. How your poise is on the rails is equally as important as to the technical merits of the trick. Now you want to do hard tricks and make them look easy a lot like Benny Milam does. He is a technician the blend of style and technicality. Garrett McKenzie's got it too. He's been riding great all day. Look at that. Spinning 360, landing in a 50-50, total precision. Now here we have Veda Holland. Did great on the jump. Now she's serving it up on the rail with the front side blunt slide 270 out. She's looking like a contender here, Todd. 
And look at how many people have come out to celebrate snowboarding in Minneapolis St. Paul. Usually, if you were out here riding rails on the Capitol steps, you would be booted in 30 seconds, but they have rolled out the red carpet for these riders here today. Okay, we have a fan favorite, a crowd pleaser, Ryan Paul. He's got a technical backside 270 ready to that nolly front flip down the stairs. The crowd loves it. They're going ballistic. Never underestimate a front flip and what that will do to a crowd's enthusiasm. Ryan Paul makes it over the bonus stairs at the bottom. Now we have zone one winner, Egan Wint, bloodthirsty for the win, going for that nose slide pretzel and she pays the piper there. So Egan goes down. Austin Viz, also a big contender. His domination of zone one was not something to take lightly, and he's looking just as strong over here on the rails. Remember, three zones, this is two of three. Now we got Garrett McKenzie coming in with a tail tap to blunt slide, switch back 180 down the stairs. That's gonna check the creativity box for these judges. Okay, here comes Pete right here. Switch backside 270, goes down. The snow is not soft out here. There is a switch backside lip slide from Luke Winkleman. Garrett McKenzie, you're someone who's got a deep bag of tricks. How deep can we expect you to go here in this uh, zone two? It's not always deep, you know? It's like, it's a circumstantial depth. Some days it's shallow. Okay. At best. And today, how does it feel? I don't know, I don't know. How much do you have to save for this third crazy kink rail. Are you saving something? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. This is what I'm here for, is okay. that. Cool. Well, we're excited to see that. Thanks, Garrett. Well, you know, that rail that's in the center there is looming ominously for these riders, but they have to get through these two down bars in zone two before they get to take a crack at that. Now, this event has been a spectacle so far, and Benny Milam has been consistently landing tricks, a lot like a conveyor belt, a machine, one would say, of A-grades. Benny, we saw you in zone one looking incredible. Zone two, you were just warming this thing up. I've got to, I've got to ask, do you save something for zone three? Do you leave it all on the line? What's the strategy? Honestly, just wing it. Like, I'm kind of just winging it. Getting juiced up off people doing crazy stuff like RP back to front flip. Yeah. Kind of just going with the flow, I guess. All right. Well, I'm excited to see where that flow leads us. Good work, Benny. Heck yeah, Stan. <laughs> All right. Egan Wint taking another crack at this no slide, pretzel out, and doesn't get it again. Now that rail is steep, it puts you into the ground. It's a straight up pile driver into this rock hard snow. Now here we have Ryan Paul, a true showman. He knows how to work the crowd. Now he's dropping in switch. What's he got for us, Todd? Switch back to 70 into a switch nollie front flip. I mean, he is a local boy here, cutting his teeth on the local hills, the rope toes. He's not scared of throwing himself over this cement snow. Look at him using that nose like a diving board. The crowd's fired up, he's, cra he's fired up. We love to see it. And these riders, you know, they're keeping the energy up. They've been pounding it out here all day long. Remember, this is only zone two of three. There's still that giant kink rail in the middle yet for them to tackle. Now, one of the beautiful things about this setup is it's a long event and it really shows how deep their bags of tricks are, how good these snowboarders truly are, Todd. Yeah, and the judges, they don't wanna see you just repeat the same trick over and over. If you're a rider that can adapt and do a whole bunch of different moves, you're gonna be rewarded by the judges. Oh my God, Benny Milam, that was not gluten-free snowboarding right there. That was a full feast of gluten, I'm sorry. Now that is just buttery smooth right there. That's that I can't believe it's not butter Fabio situation. Here we have Sam Klein going for that gap back 350. Ooh, it's it's sketchy. When you miss on a backside 360, 250, 50, you will end up on the stairs. Now Luke Winkleman putting on a show all day long. You can see the riders are kind of starting to slow down a little bit. Fatigue perhaps getting to him. Yeah, this is uh, these guys are athletes here. They are trained professionals, and Iris Pham is one of the best in the business. She's known for dominating rail jams like she's doing here in this zone two section. Well, you definitely have to talk about that. It is a marathon, not a sprint. You've got another full section to go after this one. Each one of these sessions would be an ender for me, as we see. 
Egan get bucked over that last set of stairs. Well, we all know that your physical fitness is not great, Todd, but these riders, fortunately, they do have great fitness. It's a lot like Rocky running up the stairs. That's what these guys are doing. Here's a switch lip 270. Benny just can't be stopped today. Benny is putting on a demo out here. Grace Warner getting a little bit better every time that she hits these rails. Egan looking for a re-up. There's that front side, 360, and sits down. This is the frenzy towards the end of this event. And here we have Pete Crosdale, AKA Sneaky Pete, dropping in, switch back to getting annihilated. Wow. That will conclude zone two. Unbelievable. The zone two victories go to Veda Holland and Luke Winkleman. Veda's 92.7 score edged out Grace Warner's 90.9, and Winkleman's 94.5 is nearly four points better than Benny Milam's. On the overall scoreboard, after two zones, Veda Holland surges into the lead, a slim one point edge over Egan Wint. And on the men's side, Luke Winkleman, his victory also vaults him into the lead, one point better than Austin Viz. Veda, unreal performance, zone to open up that rail section you were stomping that's got to feel good what was the strategy how are we feeling oh i'm so happy to be out here with all my homies kind of had a hard morning this morning i took a bit of a bail in practice so it's good to just put my feet down and get some stuff under my belt so i'm really stoked this is crazy i don't know how to feel <laughs> luke winkleman Absolutely surgical out there. Also a solid contender in zone one, now a winner of zone two. You got your eyes on the overall podium? What's that vibe? I'm looking for it, I'm looking for it. All right. So yeah, we'll be, we'll be grinding. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> All right, zone two, done and dusted. The women, they put on a show. Iris Pham, consistent all day long. Grace Warner put on a show. Rode smooth, excellent style, and of course our winner, Veda could not be stopped. And the men, they crush these rails. Ryan Paul, the crowd pleaser himself. And we have Benny Milam, the conveyor belt of technicality. And our smooth as silk operator, Luke Winkleman got that top spot. All right, all eyes are now on that third kink rail. Welcome back to Red Bull Heavy Metal. <laughs> The Red Bull people come in and bring it all and bring trucks of snow and set it up and bring the rails and set it up. Like, it's crazy to watch. Red Bull Heavy Metal's celebration of street snowboarding began in the early 2000s, shining a light on a style of riding that makes use of features that wouldn't look out of place at a skate park. Rails, gaps, stairs, hubbas, anything that you would find at your local skate park that you would session. The series was revived in 2022 at the iconic Cascade Park in Duluth, Minnesota. In 2023, the world's elite street snowboarders made the pilgrimage to Hart Plaza in downtown Detroit. This year, the Minnesota State Capitol is the home for three intimidating challenges. A 40-foot, two-story gap jump, a set of 25-foot down rails, and a massive 60-foot down flat down rail in front of the Capitol's entrance. No other contest has winches into a big step down or is dropping out of the state capitol, which is a pretty insane thing that we get to we get the blessing of doing. Any other day of the week, we would be kicked out of that spot. So it's really cool to get permission and actually be able to snowboard in front of something so beautiful. It's honestly an honor. All right, Chris, so here we go. This is zone number three and arguably the most nerve wracking feature that we have out here for these riders to take on. A gigantic down, flat down kink rail. This thing is absolutely huge and it's gonna put the riders to the test. Let me tell you, Todd, this kink rail is like a bucking bronco once you hit that flat. It wants to eject you, and just making it to the end of this balancing act is a sheer feat. So good. Chris, I'm not a lot of people in the What's on the cheek there? Oh, I, uh, I kissed some stairs earlier. <laughs> right on the face, yeah. They didn't even take me out to dinner first. <laughs> 
Let's go. I'm with Sam Klein. Kid's been. <laughs> Absolutely firing all day. First one to kind of take that challenge rail. That's got to feel good. Crowd went crazy. Feels great. I'm here to entertain. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Anything big planned for this? Uh, front board. Front board. You heard it here. folks. Wow. Okay. Uh, front board. Heavy claim on this big kink rail, Chris. I mean, these riders have to be looking at this thing just being like, oh my gosh, what did I sign up for? A little bit of a squirrely bit. Oh my gosh, he just backwards. This is crazy. Zone three's going off Calm down, already. Father. Calm down. Oh hey, Logan, kind of a big performance. Just went absolutely crazy on that kink rail. Uh, again, you are the qualifier. That's got to feel good to show up, make the crowd go it crazy. Feels, like. It feels great. Just having a chance to be here is so fun. Yeah, and uh, you got some hometown pride going on. Is oh, yeah. that advantage helping you out here today? It's helping me out a lot because I like I know so many people in the crowd. Just doing it for them. Heck yeah, man. We'll get back up there. That was incredible. That's one of the beautiful things about this contest, Todd. We have local heroes like Beck, and we have Olympic gold medalists like Seb Toots, and of course we have Egan Wint, who's hungry for the win. I mean, here's the way this thing has to shake down. You have to make it to the end of this rail to even be considered to move on to the final round for zone three. I said it earlier, I'm going to say it again, it's a balancing act. It's hard to put into words how difficult it is to make it to the end of this quote-unquote challenge rail. And I mean, you've got to be able to be in control enough so you can handle that speed as you get spit out of where that kink is in the middle of this rail. And then you can be like Sam Klein, you can opt to skip the entire kink, bunny hop over that thing, and just take it out of the equation. Now, Chris, I would never step onto this rail, even if you paid me a large sums of money, but I have to imagine that once you jump on, you've got to be concentrating on the end of this rail or else you're just going to slip off the side. 100%, and coming off early, there's a lot of consequence with all that concrete, with all the impact, but here we have Joey Fava oh early getting into a backflip, setting the tone, Todd. Joey Fava locking into the backside lip slide. The crowd goes out. Absolutely mental. Was that a fluke? Was that like just the luck of the lock right there? That was just unbelievable to see this trick happening so early in the competition. This is just monumental for snowboarding. The amount of danger of sliding backwards, digging your heels into that kink. There's so much consequence here. Unreal. Look at him there, locking into it, making it perfectly, total control. And Joey's just like, what just happened? That's what you dream about. When you're dreaming about doing a back lip and you're mind snowboarding, that's what you envision, that Joey Fava back lip. Now we got Beck going for the back Ooh. three. There is no regard for safety. You can get annihilated on that trick. Yeah, and Joey just basically set the rest of the competitors on fire. The bar has been raised. And that's just qualifiers. We haven't even started finals, but a lot of these snowboarders might be out of a job after that back lip, Todd. Well, they're going to be doing their best to make it into the finals for zone three. There's Mace, half cab 50-50, coming off just a little bit early. That was light work for the kids. Yeah, this thing, again, we've said it before. I'm going to say it again. It's a balancing act. Joey is still recovering from this monumental move in snowboarding, something that is actually will go down in history, that backside lip slide, is one of the greater tricks ever done on a handrail. Egan Wint coming off a little bit early. The rider is just trying to make it through to the end of this rail, and that right there is what we call a stair massage. Yeah, if you want to win the contest, you can't be afraid of eating oh. some concrete, <laughs> and Mace certainly isn't. He's hungry. He's getting a lot of drops, Todd. He's been attacking this kink rail. All right, Grace Warner locking into that 50-50 and making it to the end. That's how you get it done and guaranteeing your spot into the final. And that was square off the end, no questions asked. That's what the judges want to see. They want to see you come off. Oh, we got the Joey Fava crab walk. Look at this, Todd. <laughs> Taking the internet by storm. If you haven't seen his crab walk, check out Joey Fava's Instagram. Well, here comes his brother, Pat Fava. Let's go down and talk to Joey Fava right now about that back lip. All right, Joey Fava just back lipped uh, in what I can only call an unthinkable moment. Uh, did you go just blank brain for that? Were you thinking about that? What happened there? I tried it in practice a couple times. I had a feeling I could do it, and then that one, honestly, it worked out. I surprised myself and just 
Oh, ins insane. I surprised myself, dude. Yeah, your brother, who's kind of been on a winning tear in these rail jams, you kind of just put him on notice. Yes, that's good. Yeah, you got to put him in his place sometimes, but that's my dog. I freaking love him so much, dude. So well, happy to be here. Snowboarding just won after that. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Let's go. Thank you. And again, this is just the qualifier, not even the finals, and things are heating up. Egan went. She is like a shark circling right now, and there's blood in the water. I got to say, you know, if you're Joey Fava right now, what is your technique for the rest of the event? Because it's hard enough to make it down this to the end, never mind throwing a back lip. Do you think that his strategy now is going to be try something different or keep practicing a back lip to maybe take it to finals? It's hard to say. I think consistency is key in this event. Making it to the end is going to be absolutely crucial, a lot like Garrett McKenzie just did on that tail press. But consistency is going to be the key to success here. All right, well, you don't want to peak too early. Benny, oh, ow, Benny slamming his shoulder right into that rail. It looks like his elbow is out of place right now, and he's casually popping it back in. Oof. These guys are gladiators. This is serious, serious stuff. Wow, Benny. And that's Benny, one of the best in the world. I mean, it just shows you how tough these streets can be. If you've got someone that needs to give your elbow a little yank to get you back out there, that's what it takes. 100%, and it shows how gnarly it is. That's a little out of character for Benny Milam, the technician, to take a fall like that. It puts in perspective how aggressive this kink rail is. Yeah, and I mean, look, you've got to be so on it here. This rail, giant kink rail, down flat down, is the equalizer here today. It's definitely going to really influence what happens going into the overall standings of Red Bull Heavy Metal. Yeah, and for this just to be the qualifier, I can't imagine the finals. So there's Austin Viz. He's looking like a contender for the top spot. And you gotta remember, when you come off early on this kink rail, it is a hell ride down these stairs. Yeah, not only you know, are you disappointed in not being able to make it to the end for the judges, but also now you have to contend with just getting ragdolled down some cement steps. Okay, we've wrapped up zone three qualifier. Chris, how did it go down? Well, here we have Luke Lund with the beautiful 5180 out. Iris Fams locked and loaded on that board slide. Egan Wint showing up all day long in zone three. And Grace Warner locking it right off the end of this gigantic kink rail. Luke Winkleman rode really great in qualifiers, as did Mace with the half cab 50 back one. And of course, Austin Viz, a contender all day long, king of style. Another style god himself, Luke Winkleman. But it was really all about Joey Fava's backside lip slide. That was the star of the show. All the riders in contention are moving on to the finals of Zone 3. The current overall leader for the women, Veda Holland, is followed by Egan Wint, Iris Pham, Jalen Hansen, and Grace Warner. On the men's side of things, Luke Winkleman advances to the final, followed by his five closest competitors. Mace Ojik and Sam Klein round out the field. The final competition to determine the Red Bull Heavy Metal Champion is next. It's the final round for Street Snowboarding's premier event. This is Red Bull Heavy Metal. Luke Winkleman is on top of the leaderboard right now, heading into our third and final zone, a daunting 60-foot down flat down rail, and it's a feature that Winkleman will have to attack with precision, style, and an infectious attitude if he wants to get the job done. I guess my like essence or energy when I'm snowboarding is just I'm just trying to smile and have fun like I get to do this as my job is like pretty rad, so I'm just always happy I get to live my dream and I just want to also show people how fun it is. For me, I'm just gonna try and hit every feature I can as much as I can and just lay as many tricks out there. I want to ride consistently, so I want to be landing lots of stuff, which is <laughs> much easier said than done. Street snowboarding is kind of a way that we can like express how we want our snowboarding to be seen, or even just like our creative lifestyle. It's crazy like going out to the cities and trying to film like real spots, like handrails and gaps, roof jumps, like wall rides, all kinds of stuff. So it's a good way that, you know, we can kind of express our uh, style, I guess. 
All right, let's get this party started. You All right, so ready? Luke Winkleman will start three. us off here in this Zone 3 final. Remember, all the scores are carrying over from Zones 1 and 2. Not only do you want to win this, but you also want to win that overall, and Luke is in the running. This is the Thunderdome. This is the final welcome to the show. And one thing about a rail jam is you always want to end on a bang. People remember the bangers at the end, like Garrett McKenzie putting down that 50-50 back 270 to board slide. And, you know, we were talking about it earlier, how the qualifier for this kind of was running like a final in terms of the energy and the tricks that were going down. Will the riders be able to bring it to another level here in this final is the question. Yeah, where do we go from here, Todd? That is a big question. It's hard to go up from that Joey Fava back lip, but Gary McKenzie looks locked in. <laughs> he wants it. Look at that board slide 270, reverting back the back one. He's in a flow state. Rocking the boat, trying to keep his balance. Iris Pham, probably one of the best styles once she gets locked down to a rail of any of the women. No stranger to a rail jam final. She's won a lot of money in her career, dominating the steel. And here comes Luke Winkleman in this final. Luke, there he goes, 270 off the end. I mean, it's really kind of a battle of trying to build as much technical tricks as you can while, you know, concentrating on making it to the end. Let's look at this board slide, blunt slide, 270 out. That's perfection. That's what the judges want to see straight off the end, no questions asked. Are we gonna see another backlip from Joey Fava? I wanna know. What are the odds of him being able to do it again? It's a two to make it true oh situation, Todd. He How did it once. Did that occur? He did it again. Well, wow. Joey Fava, I mean, I go buy yourself a lottery ticket right now. That was insane. I can't believe that he put it down, but that just shows you how good Joey Fava is on riding rails. Give this guy a raise. So you go up over the top with that backside lip slide, high risk, locks it in, comes off the end. This is just, all I can say is, this, give this guy a raise. Wow, I can't believe it. His brother, Pat, going crazy. That was insane. Here comes his brother, Pat Fava, looking for the nose slide pretzel. He's still excited about his brother. Doesn't even care he didn't make it. Oh, Luke Lund has entered the chat. Wow, this is insane. I, you know, it, it takes a second for the riders to heat it up and get warmed up on this rail, but then it just starts to be a stoke train, people making tricks one after another. Now that's Nader looking for that switch front side 270. He's betting big to win big, but sometimes it doesn't pan out. Well, you're gonna have to bring something extra special as Iris Pham just comes down, perfect style, all the way to the end. That's what she does. When it's time to show up, she clocks in, punches her card, and she wants the money. She wants the respect. She wants to dominate. <laughs> Iris. Just absolute perfection of a board slide on that. What is that feeling? Crowd went crazy. I'm so happy. I just wanted to do something I was stoked on today, and that was it. That was stoked for all of us. Incredible work. Uh, what's left out there now? I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm just happy. Woo! Yeah. Thank you, Iris. <laughs> Wow, I mean, it's it's hard to deny how happy she must feel after perfect board slides, but th this final is on fire right now. It's like a train engine. Once the train gets rolling, it gets going good. It takes a minute to get going, but once the freight train gets going, it can't be stopped. And another thing to notice too, this is a jam session. As fast as the riders can get back up to the top, they can just keep going and going. There is no minimum amount of times or maximum amount of times these riders can hit this down flat down. Now that's one of our European riders, Mace, with the switchboard slide, 270 out. Another perfect move down the kick. Joey Fava, nose press what? back one. Joey quietly dismantling this rail. He is on another level right now. Yeah, his special meter's up. He can't be stopped. He can't believe that he went to the end on that nose press back 180. Again, a nose press is very technical. Uh, this is a replay of Mace, not of Joey, but that was a perfect switchboard slide, 270. And then here's Joey's nose press. Leaning over the nose into that kink rail is extremely high consequence if it goes wrong. All right, back up to the top. Pat Fava is trying to build on some of the stoke. His brother is delivering right now. He really wants that backside 270 on. 
and not landing solid on the rail. That's just not safe, Todd. They don't care. There is no, nothing they won't do to win this contest oh. back. Oh, inches from glory. I can't tell you how big for snowboarding that would have been. That would have been one of the heaviest tricks we've ever seen in the history of street snowboarding. Now, Egan needs to land something to get this overall. She's looking good in zone one and two. Can she seal the deal in zone three? Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on Austin Viz as well. He needs to put down something solid. But someone that's making a real move right now is Joey Fava. That's him getting bucked off of that kink. If your weight isn't perfect, it will eject you like it just did Joey. These guys are tired. There's only a few minutes left. They're heated up. Pat wants the backside too. I can't tell you how unsafe that move is. It's so scary. That's the ultimate commitment. As soon as you leave, you spin on there, and all you're trying to do is balance perfectly, but you've got a lot of factors working against you. Now Mace is coming with a late push with that half gap 50 to nose slide pretzel. He's showing up late. He looks like he wants it. Can Egan seal the deal? She needs to make something on this. Egan, will she make it? She comes off early. Wow. Now we're starting. This is the push towards the end here. The riders, the crescendo. This is the end of the 4th of July celebration. The fireworks are going absolutely nuts. This is what we call the final countdown right now. Cue the music. Here comes Goop Surf. He landed a trick earlier that was really heavy. He's really finding his flow. He's locking in at the end of the contest. Can Sam Anderson serve up a cab 270? You can see the frenzied activity up there in the drop. This is the final moments of this competition. These hungry, hungry hippos are just attacking this kink rail with no regard for safety. Can Beck get the backside 360? Oh, I might, I'm having a hard time breathing every time I see him try that. It's nerve wracking. It's so scary, the amount of precision it takes. Hey, Austin Viz needs to land something big and comes off just a little bit early. Joey getting the crowd stoked. The crowd wants more. They want to see him keep going. Joey Fava's brother, Pat Fava, laces that mute grab at the end there to seal the deal. Icing on the cake. Can Egan do it? Egan makes it to the end, finally, with the backside 360. Will it be enough to put her in contention for the overall win? That's how you end the contest. That's how you end the contest. Shut this down! Joey Fava's trick of the day gives him the zone victory, earning a score five points higher than runner-up Luke Lund. Iris Pham takes the zone on the women's side, earning a five-point win over Grace Warner. Show us the hardware. Show the camera the hardware. Anybody want to dedicate this win to this podium position's got to feel good on this massive rail. I think my dad. My dad's always helped me do this snowboarding. So him and Egan for being like my new homie that supports me all the time and cheers me on and it makes me feel really stoked. Joey, insane performance on, uh, you know, the Statue of Jibberty it was called, uh, the Cheekalizer, you went back lip, back nose press, back one out, taking home the win in that third spot, that's gotta feel good. Dude, yes, unreal. Thank you, Red Bull, this is insane. I think I kind of surprised myself. I did it in the qualifier. I kind of was right, thinking of not doing it again and somehow did it two times in a row and walked away with this. I'm so thankful and just happy to be here. So this is how it went down for zone three and our champs. Egan went, locked it in right to the end, as did Grace Warner, kink rail specialist, and Iris Pham sealing the deal with that board slide. And here we have Mace with the switch blunt slide 270 out pure perfection. Luke Lund, who had a late push, showed up surgical with the steel. And the man who dominated the kink rail, Joey Fava. We'll crown the 2024 Red Bull Heavy Metals men's and women's overall champions next. Here in St. Paul, we've seen an electric winch sling riders over a 40-foot gap, athletes throwing down complex tricks on a pair of down bars, and elite snowboarding on a daunting 60 foot down flat down over cement steps. Defending champion Egan Wynn's final run earned her a third place finish in zone three, giving her enough points to repeat as the women's Red Bull heavy metal champion. You said before you've never come back to a contest that you've won to come back and win again. How's that feel? It's terrifying. <laughs> but really, really good. 
I'm going to be hurting tomorrow, but, you know, sorry my cheeks. I'm smiling so much. This is so sick. It feels good to surprise myself. I wasn't expecting it, and I'm excited to see what I do next. <laughs> Wint just edges out Zone 3 winner Iris Pham for the overall title. Veda Holland finishes in third, followed by Jalen Hansen and Grace Warner, who finished fifth despite not competing in Zone 1. Our overall men's winner, Luke Winkleman! Let's go, Luke! On the men's side, Luke Winkleman taking home his first Red Bull Heavy Metal overall win after excelling in all three zones. Luke Winkleman showed up all three zones today, made every single final. Now you're walking away with a big piece of hardware, walking away with a big check. <laughs> This one's got to feel good. The crowd today was unreal, like so loud, so interactive with all of us. Like it was really rad. And I just think like the general population anywhere should see something like this, you know, and can understand like what snowboarding actually is and the community and all of us smiling or getting bodied, you know, the carnage we talked about. So thanks, Mama. Thanks, my dad. Shout out North Carolina. <laughs> Shout out North Carolina, Luke, congrats on the win, 2024 20, Red Bull Heavy Metal Let's Champion, go. Luke Winkleman, congrats buddy. What an unforgettable day of snowboarding here in St. Paul, history was made, progression happened, one for the record books, Todd. It was incredible. And a huge shout out to St. Paul for rolling the red carpet out for these riders to put on this epic performance. So on behalf of Chris Grenier, Stan Levier, I'm Todd Richards, and I'm saying see you later. We'll see you at the next Red Bull Heavy Metal.